MMA prospects don't often come around quite like this one, folks. Ever since Hamzat Shemeyev made a dent on the MMA public's consciousness, it has been clear that we have a future title challenger on our hands. But Hamzat's glittering run through combat sports started long before his name became known to the global audience. This man's talent has been shining through for years now, and to fully understand how inevitable he has been, you must first go back to where it all began. Born in the small village of Gvardeskoy in Chechnya, Russia, Khazmat's upbringing did not suggest that he would one day become a trailblazing force in the world of combat sports. But even with that being the case, it's clear that fighting was in his DNA. At the age of just five years old, he set foot on the wrestling mats for the first time, and eventually he won a bronze medal at the Russian National Championships at a junior level. But his progress would truly be accelerated when he left Russia for Sweden at the age of 18. It did not take long until Hazmat was considered one of the very best freestyle wrestlers in the country, winning gold medals in two different weight classes in 2016 and 2017 foreshadowing his division-hopping future in mixed martial arts. And sure enough, when he reached 23 years old, he had his sights set on new challenges. Mixed martial arts provided the perfect opportunity for Shemeyev to channel his natural fighting spirit and use the wrestling chops he had picked up over the years. As you all know, it was a match made in heaven. After going 3-0 as an amateur over the course of six months, Bors turned pro and had an immediate impact, scoring four straight finishes in 2018 to start to make a name for himself. He wasn't yet seen as the uber prospect that he would eventually become, but it was clear that his physicality was immense, and the way it transferred through to both the welterweight and middleweight? The early signs were there that this man was headed somewhere special. At this point, we didn't know exactly how good Hamzat could be. But in the fifth fight of his career, he certainly picked up a win that has aged superbly well. Ikram Aliskarov is a damn good prospect in his own right, and recently he proved as much by securing a first round Kimura victory on Dana White's Contender Series to book his place in the UFC. Back when he and Shemeyev were merely rising talents under the Brave CF banner, he was truly the first fighter to give Hamza trouble. Okay, by trouble, we actually mean that Shemeyev's takedowns weren't as effective. But given that Hamza was rapidly becoming a very well-rounded fighter, it didn't matter. A deft uppercut sent Aliskarov to the Shadow Realm, a knockout that came just two and a half minutes in. That might not sound like much, but that was still Hamza's toughest fight up until that point. And this would be a real trend for Shemeyev. The man deals in very swift and brutal violence. And after winning his next fight by Bravo Choke, his 6-0 record started to get attention. We all know how the story played out from here. The COVID-19 pandemic provided the perfect stage for a fighter as totally fearless and confident as Shemeyev to make his move. And when the UFC called on him to make a debut against John Phillips on Fight Island, Bors well and truly delivered the goods, securing a dominant Bravo Choke submission, his second in a row. But if you're looking for a moment that set Hamzat up for his path to superstardom, look no further than his decision to take another fight in the UFC just 10 days later against the rising Irish prospect, Reese McKee. Dana White, having the keen eye for talent that he does, saw this opportunity and ran with it. Hamzat would make the fastest winning turnaround in UFC history, scoring yet another victory in dominant fashion. All of a sudden, the MMA world were hooked. This Chechen powerhouse was mauling fighters with a level of intensity that brought comparisons to the great Khabib Nurmagomedov. 
but there was something different about Shemaev, something that made him seem genuinely bloodthirsty in there. A total aggression and desire to inflict pain to find the finish. And when he decided to take his next fight 15 pounds higher at middleweight against the veteran Gerald Mearshert and proceeded to knock him out in 17 seconds, Hamzat Mania went to another level entirely. But things were not going to be that simple for this undeniably gifted prospect. And a battle with COVID that nearly forced his early retirement left this unusually active fighter sidelined for 13 months. Something that would have killed the momentum of a lesser figure. But if anything, Hamzat became an even bigger star during his absence, and when he returned to take on the fan favorite Li Jinglong in Abu Dhabi, he received a hero's welcome. And when he picked up the leech and walked him across the cage while talking to Dana White, yeah, it was clear that Shamea was back with a vengeance. An easy submission victory brought this blue chip prospect to the first elite test of his career. There's been one strike landed, I think, right? <laughs> yes. I'm not kidding. In all of his fights. In all of his fights. Four UFC fights, he's given up one strike. One strike, DC. Gilbert Burns was no slouch on the ground, and his own dangerous striking game provided him with the tools to really test Hamzad's fighting spirit. And test it, he did. When these guys met at UFC 273, the resulting fight was one of the best battles of the year. A riveting contest that saw both men push to their absolute limits. Hamzat was hurt on more than one occasion, but make no mistake, he also left his mark on Burns, dragging him into a brutal battle of wills. In the end, the judges saw it in favor of Boris. Sure, his insanely one-sided offensive stat line was now a thing of the past, but the prize for the blood he spilt would come in the form of a matchup with one of the biggest stars in the sport. A fight with Nate Diaz brings with it the type of exposure that most fighters would kill for. But Hamzat was about to really mess things up for himself. It's hard to know exactly what went wrong, but when the time came to hit the scales, Shemaev came in at a whopping 7.5 pounds over the welterweight limit. Naturally, the fans were outraged, and the fact that Shemaev had started a backstage brawl with Kevin Holland just a few days later led to questions about his professionalism. In the end, he still made an appearance on the card, taking a 180-pound catchweight co-main event spot against Holland while Diaz headlined against Tony Ferguson. And to say that Hamzat had an easy time dealing with Holland would be putting it lightly. There are levels to the fight game, folks, and Shemaev was simply on a different one to the Trailblazer. Now seeking fights at both welterweight and middleweight, who knows what the future will hold for Boers. He clearly had the talent to be a world champion, and if his history is any indicator, he'll likely be very competitive at either 170 or 185 pounds. The top of the middleweight division contains a pair of strikers that could well have a nightmare dealing with Hamza's wrestling pressure, but there's no denying that his physical strength translates best to the welterweight division. He's a young fighter and an undeniably great fighter by any metric. For now, we just have to wait on that fight announcement. But no matter what he does next, it's clear that Hamzat is one of the biggest breakout stars of his era. Thank you for tuning in. Be sure to click the bell to be notified of future videos.